What kind of person is your accuser if you're facing any criminal charge involving some illicit, meaning unlawful, illegal interaction between you and another person, whether it's sexual in nature or uh, if that person accused you of having physically harmed them in some way or vandalized their property. Again, these are crimes between persons. Generally speaking, you've actually injured another person. I'm not really talking so much about like a drug possession case. Uh, that's probably a topic for another video. I'm talking specifically about where someone, a specific person or persons are accusing you of something embarrassing, humiliating, and which happens to be illegal. For example, a sexual battery or similar allegation. Okay. The prosecutor's case is going to rest primarily, not exclusively, but primarily on the credibility, the believability of the accuser and how this person, how the prosecutor thinks this person is going to measure up in court. Are they going to be a sympathetic witness? Is a jury going to empathize with them? Uh, as opposed to the opposite. Is this person, uh, excuse the language, is this person a bullshitter? Is this person, uh, does this person have a reputation or a string of false allegations behind them? Are they histrionic? Um, are they the kind of person that, that a jury would not want to place their trust in? Okay, so these are three tips on how to deal with that, how to deal with an accuser, uh, specifically how to show the government, the prosecutor in your case, that the accuser is not really a trustworthy or believable person. Uh, I'm making this and a few other videos for folks who just don't have the financial resources at the time to hire an attorney. Uh, or maybe you do have an attorney, but you are, uh, you're doing your own homework and you're taking an active role in your defense. <clears throat> maybe this is something that you want to uh, discuss with your attorney, but primarily these are, uh, this type of video is for uh, somebody who doesn't have counsel, does not want state apport, appointed counsel. They think they can go at it alone. I don't recommend it, but to each his own. Okay, so here goes. Tip number one, don't intimidate the accuser. Don't contact the accuser. Many, several important reasons for that. Primarily, you don't, you know, they, they say the first rule of holes is to stop digging. You're just going to dig yourself into a deeper hole if you contact this person, pressure them uh, against proceeding with their accusation or even a you know what you think is gently nudging them could be construed by the prosecutor by the police by the government as being witness intimidation which is yet another criminal charge you'll have to face if you engage in that behavior so and let's say that doesn't even happen let's say that you uh nothing comes out of the fact that you reach out to the accuser now i will tell you uh even without the witness intimidation uh, charge that could come out of that, generally speaking, I mean, in almost every single case that I've dealt of this nature, there is a protective order. You can't contact the victim, uh, the complaining witness, let's say, okay? So then you'd be violating that protective order if you do that. Let's say, let's take that off, all, uh, assume none of that is a risk. Let's say that nothing adverse could happen to you from contacting the complaining witness, which I've never seen. The problem is that you, anything you continue to tell that person, even if they don't contact the police and say you're trying to pressure them, uh, that's, that's all stuff that can be subpoenaed by the prosecutor. I mean, if you're texting back and forth or whatever, and that can be, even if you think you're helping your case by doing that, maybe explaining yourself to the person. You have to understand that that's just going to be more evidence. Now, a, a lot of evidence that seems um, exculpatory, meaning it could it, you think it could help you, you know, it could be interpreted the opposite direction also. So the prosecutor could take a string of texts that you think are helping your case initiated by you to the complaining witness, and they can say that it actually helps maybe prove consciousness of guilt or whatever. 
just don't talk to them. Okay, if you have counsel, let, let the lawyer talk to them. But that's not something you need to get involved with. Uh, you've got to confront your case head on. So, like I said, stop digging the hole any bigger than you've already have by incurring this criminal accusation. And let's move on to tip number two. Uh, now, some of this might sound a little bit Machiavellian, okay? You have to understand, I'm a criminal defense attorney. My fundamental priority in every case is to help make sure my client uh, does not get convicted at all. Uh, if that is not possible because the evidence is absolutely overwhelming, then to minimize as much as possible, avoid jail, avoid uh, you know lengthy probation, that sort of thing. So that's the mindset I'm coming from when I'm about to tell you what I'm about to tell you. Uh, you will probably want a private investigator. You know, now uh, private investigators are not as expensive as they used to be. A lot of that is due to the market. Um, prior to the internet, there, was, there were very few methods of digging dirt up on another person. And uh, the internet has its limitations. Sometimes you want to go the extra mile, get yourself a pri uh, private investigator. Uh, they'll probably work with you on the fees. There's, there, it's the, the, the private investigator market is pretty saturated. You'll probably be able to find a reasonable, a reasonably charged, or excuse me, a private investigator that charges reasonably. Like if you can't afford an attorney, but maybe you can afford a couple hundred bucks uh, for a, a private investigator. This is fundamentally important. Uh, because again, as I said earlier, the prosecutor's case rests on the believability, the credibility of the accuser. So if the accuser has a history of lying, uh, making up allegations against people that don't pan out into any sort of criminal conviction, the prosecutor's gonna have a tough time convincing a jury that whatever the accuser is saying about you, that you groped or uh, committed some uh, sexually illicit conduct against their will. You know, at the end of the day, the jury is the one that determines the facts. They're the ones that decide whether stuff happened or didn't. So the prosecutor's uh, witness has to be somebody that they can believe. And a private investigator might shed light on previous incidents of such false allegations getting made. And that can be very powerful evidence. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, if your case goes to trial, now I wouldn't recommend you cross-examining a witness if you don't know the evidence rules. That's why I always say better to have an experienced, exclusively criminal defense attorney, and even then somebody who handles this type of accusation significantly, not just part-time. But if you are going to engage in that, if you're going to be the one to cross-examine the um, the accuser, the person who's accusing you of groping or whatever Ill illegal conduct against them, any past um, allegation they've made of this sort, anything that that reflects poorly on their honesty, on their believability, you're going to be able to impeach. Impeach means to erode the believability of that witness in front of the jury. Impeaching their, that's why it's called impeaching the credibility of the witness. Okay? Uh, is this person a drug abuser? Does this person have felony convictions? Uh, now, you have to understand that the prosecutor is going to defend their witness to the hill. They're going to object, objection, irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you got to be prepared for that. I hate to say it, but, I mean, you have to understand the consequences of getting going down, for example, on a sex crime. I mean, you're talking lifetime sex offender registration in the vast majority of states. I'm, I'm in California, we now currently have a lifetime sex offender registration. It's embarrassing as hell. People can find you online and see what you did and make your life miserable. So you have to understand 
the repercussions of going down on this type of crime. You can't play games. You have to go the extra mile. And you have to stack up, you know, with, within limits, okay? I'm not doing no illegal surveillance. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about a, 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 an, an ethical investigator who can dig up dirt on this person. Because if you don't, then you're going to have a person, no matter how dishonest he or she has been in the past, the jury's going to believe them unless you can undermine their believability. Okay? Now, lastly, I'm going to wrap up here. Video video is getting a bit long. Uh, actually, goes back to what I said before. Has this person made other types of accusations? Doesn't even necessarily have to be regarding, for example, if it's a sex offense, necessarily about that. Have they accused somebody in the civilian context? Have they, um, you know, filed frivolous lawsuits? Have they accused falsely their employer or a business partner or anything like that? You need to see if there's a history of doing that stuff. Because at the end of the day, the jury has to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the highest standard in the land. Uh, now, the, the one thing I want to uh, give a summation of here is how important it is to show the prosecutor this. Now, there are some attorneys who... Um, don't think that's a good idea. They want to hold, in other words, they kind of want to ambush the prosecutor with last minute evidence of, uh, uh, that impeaches the accuser. I personally do not subscribe to that. And the reason for that is oftentimes, in most cases, you're going to be probably dealing with a prosecutor who is just trying to do their job. I know that's hard to believe, but uh, that has been my experience. And uh, I've been able to uncover a lot of problems with witness credibility of uh, accusers against my clients and the, the prosecutor, you know, they're, they don't want, they, generally speaking, uh, they're not interested in locking you up if you're innocent. I mean, it doesn't do them any good at the end of the day, you know, sc the scandals can uh, come out of that and uh, false conviction and trying to overturn the conviction. They, they generally speaking want an ironclad case. So you might as well turn over to the uh, to the prosecutor any evidence that you've got that this person has a problem with telling the truth. Um, obviously, the downside of that is they'll tr just uh, some uh, prosecutors will try to uh, rehabilitate their witness, make their uh, testimony as ironclad as possible, coach them. Uh, I think you got to do a risk-benefit analysis at the end of the day. Uh, the risk of that is lower than the benefit of the probability that the prosecutor is simply going to, they might even throw out the case completely, or at least minimize it to something where you don't have to face some daunting uh, thing like being on the lifetime sex offender registry, or even if that's not the case, but having a conviction on your record, I mean, try getting a job like that. Try getting a job with a violent crime conviction. T tell me how that pans out for you, because generally speaking, it does not. Um, okay, so this has been uh, three tips on un basically digging up dirt on your accuser, on... Uh, uncovering any history of lying. You've got to know what kind of person your accuser is. Thanks for watching.